On day one of the 2008 Republican National Convention, authorities launched mass arbitrary arrests across the city of St. Paul, taking hundreds of people into custody. Amongst those arrested were protesters, journalists, senior citizens, pedestrians, students, and more. I was in town working on a story for a monthly publication back home and found myself completely surrounded by hundreds of riot police while on my way to cover a labor rally and concert featuring <coughs> Billy Bragg, Mos Def, Tom Morello, and Atmosphere. Authorities quickly circled the park I was passing through and one by one, everyone inside was taken to jail. The following is a story of heart, perseverance, and victory about finding a light in dark places through the power of song and solidarity. Imagine you're in the park with us now, surrounded by more riot police than you can count, and they're dragging folks off one by one. <clears throat> so finally, it was our turn. And the urban military officers, wearing nearly five to $10,000 in futuristic riot gear each, rode down on us. It was like having your number called after, after watching a long line of people get kicked out of an airplane before you. Now, here we were, stepping to the edge of the exit hatch, staring down an angry jump sergeant, ready or not. Hopefully, our chutes would open and everyone in the park would land safely on the ground Amen. My arresting officer was a large, angry man with dark sunglasses and a grating voice. He said, are you going to give me any trouble? Let me tell you something. I don't like assholes who make problems. And if you give me any shit, you're going to have a bad day. Do you understand me? I can make this very hard for you. <laughs> officer. I have no intention of giving you any trouble. I believe this is an unlawful arrest, and I'll be contacting a lawyer as soon as I'm allowed to use the phone. But I respect you. It won't be a problem. Atmosphere was done, and most deaf was now on stage. The soundtrack for our mass arrest continued. <laughs> They went through everyone's pockets and wallets, slammed personal effects on the ground, and split our property up in different bags to be shipped off to God knows where. After waiting in queue for nearly an hour, I was taken behind a truck for a photo. A field station had been set up, and shots were now being taken of all the people dragged out of the park while one officer or another held documents up to the sides of our faces. It was here that I learned that I and many others were now being charged with, get this, felony riot. <laughs> Which I'll admit, sounded pretty badass. <laughs> an Angela Davis, Abby Hoffman, cool hand Luke kind of way. <laughs> but let's be honest, felony is a fucking serious charge. Like, go to prison serious. And I hadn't done anything but listen to music by the river, it felt markedly less romantic than it now sounds here tonight in poem form, so... I smiled for the photo. <laughs> like this. <laughs> and when I did, one of the cops standing around made a condescending comment about me, acting like everything was such a big fucking joke. <laughs> and I almost didn't say anything. <laughs> then I was like... Man, what do you want from me? If I scowl into the camera with handcuffs on, then I actually look like a criminal. If I appear as terrified as anybody has the right to be in this situation, 
probably just say I'm some punk protester making a big deal out of nothing. Either way, if this photo ever makes it out onto the news or anywhere else, it'll be so much easier on my mom if I'm smiling in the photo. And I don't look at it. By this point, there were a ton of press and many legal observers on the scene. I could see them on the other side of the police line as the 2008 RNC Magical Mystery Tour continued. <laughs> like a conveyor belt to the next station, we were led onto a large city bus with only a few open seats remaining, so I had to sit right up close to the driver and the cops. Awesome! <laughs> But things brightened a little when I saw that my friend Zach, who I was previously separated from, was now on the bus too. <laughs> it felt so good to see him. Instantly, we began shouting back and forth, each checking to see how the other was holding up. It became clear that the other arrestees on board were tired. They had been waiting a long time. They were anxious to know when we'd be leaving and where they were taking us. The cops on board looked bored and aggravated. They made no attempt to quiet the rising swell of conversation now passing back and forth between arrestees. A short time later, something remarkable happened. What I mean to say is, that's when the singing began. That was slow at first, but then everyone on the bus started in, loud and fearless. We made it part or all the way through Johnny Cash, Folsom Prison Blues. Bob Dylan, Like a Rolling Stone. The Beatles, Hey Jude. Bob Marley, Everything's Gonna Be All Right. And many others, I need you to picture it. A whole busload of prisoners tapping their feet in time and reaching deep for the long notes. It was quite impressive, actually, but the best was absolutely yet to come. In a very simple twist of fate type of way, the ageless, mirrored lathe of the cosmos seemed to turn in on itself and all the ironic forces of sheer ridiculousness that dictate the ebb and flow of the universe and every atom comprising its vast and incalculable quilt of coincidences and contradictions somehow saw fit that our bus, filled with the first 50 out of 200 plus unlawfully arrested U.S. citizens, rolled out for Ramsey County Jail just as a boisterous and exalted rendition of the fucking national anthem caught fire. <laughs> of dealing with, listening to, and attempting to adjust to all the endless injustice and hypocrisy of America rose in one collective swell and poured like thunder from the dark mountains in our hearts, reaching out for every jail cell, detention center, and prison camp on earth. As we passed, flashbulbs sparked and reporters rushed to catch photos of the commandeered public transport now filled with singing prisoners. <laughs> Officers detaining the last of the poor souls to be extracted from the park, talking to other cops, or just plain standing around, all stopped dead in their riot gear hockey pads for our anthem. <laughs> Some shook their heads in disgust. Others stood slack-jawed and stunned, seemingly unable to process just what the fuck was going on. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Stevens, check it out. Is that really a busload of asshole protesters singing the national anthem? Good God, sounds like they really mean it. And mean it we did, not in any ugly, pride bloated nationalistic sense and not just to give voice to the sheer irony of innocent people singing an anthem of freedom while in the process of being illegally detained, but simply to say that having a badge, waving a flag, or misinterpreting your astronomically fortunate look at simply having been born inside the legal borders of the most <laughs> divine endowment 
or indicator of personal value does not make you even one single drop more American than us. The crowd, now building outside the police perimeter, gave a resounding ovation as we passed, and we rode out like patriots, unapologetic, unbowed, and unbroken, singing for strength and taking heart in the sound of each other's voices, like the kidnapped, shackled, and wrongfully imprisoned have always done since the beginning of time. Power!